all stand to your feet. Snap along with us. I want uh, to share with you today, as God has given me the uh, opportunity to do so, um, when I'm driving along the road and I come to an intersection that has a traffic light, and as I approach the intersection, the light is green. But before I get to the intersection, the light turns yellow. What do I do? I heard somebody say, speed up. <laughs> Most of us that are good drivers would slow down in anticipation of the red light, and we would stop. But you are right, some of us, and even uh, I must admit from time to time myself, I have sped up. We are used to, in this life, we are used to responding appropriately to warning signs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Typically, when we, you know, if, if, if you're not too close to the, to the intersection, typically you'll slow down because you see that the yellow light is a warning sign that it's about to turn red, and that means that if I continue into the intersection, there's going to be danger. We are, we, we are, we are really good. I think we're really good in the, in, in, the, in the world that we live in of seeing and responding appropriately to warning signs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You see a sign that says yield. You're driving along. You see a sign that says yield. Uh, that means there's on oncoming traffic probably coming, and so we'll slow down. We typically don't speed up. We slow down and we check the ongoing traffic. When we come to a stop sign, we typically don't blow through a stop sign, and if we do, whoever's in the car with us will scream bloody murder, uh, if you will, because we are, we are, we are, are good at reading and appropriately responding to the warning signs. Hmm? Have you ever looked back over your life and seen the warning signs that God has given you and I? And aren't you glad today that you responded appropriately to the warning sign? Oh, help me, Holy Ghost, huh? Help me somebody, somebody help me, so, so, somebody help me that I got a warning sign about that woman. I shouldn't have, oh God, I shouldn't have, oh thank, thank you, thank you Jesus that I didn't marry her and I married the one I got instead. I got a warning sign about that man. I got a warning sign about that job. I got a warning sign about that situation. I didn't go into business with them. I got a warning sign. Have you ever looked back over your life? and saw the warning signs that God sent and thank God that I responded appropriately to the sign. Huh? We understand as we look back over our lives as we thank God for his warnings and we understand that just as in the traffic light scenario that the purpose of the warning sign is not to manipulate us but the purpose of the warning sign is to alert us as to what is about to happen. Hmm? I understand that we are really good at, at, at reading the signs of, of, the, of, of driving. We're driving around the traffic signs. There are, there are other signs that, that we can see and we respond to them appropriately. But I wonder why it's so difficult, it seems for us in Christendom, to understand and respond appropriately to the warning signs from the Word of God. Have you ever noticed that? We're challenged too often to understand and respond appropriately to the warning signs of the Word of God. Today, the Holy Spirit wants me to talk to you about this from this topic, the purpose of the warning. The purpose of the warning. If you grab your Bibles and stand on, stand on your feet with me to 1 Samuel 8, 
You're going to 1 Samuel 8. I'm going to be reading out of the New American Standard Bible. I want to welcome all of those that are watching via internet or you may be uh, watching on, on your television today. We're so grateful to God that you are here uh, today. And we are praying that the same grace that is upon us, that it will be upon you. The same anointing that's in this room right now, that it, it will be upon you for the glory of Jesus Christ and for your edification. 1 Samuel, the 8th chapter, beginning at verse 11, beginning at verse 11. And he said, this will be, Samuel is talking to the nation of Israel. I'll set, I'll set this up for you. Uh, scripture is Samuel has been the judge of Israel for uh, many years, and, um, but Samuel is getting old and he's got some sons and his sons that don't walk in his way. And the people of Israel are watching his sons and they're saying, you know what, we don't, we don't, we don't want their, their sons to, to be our judge. So what we want is we want a king. We want a king like all the other nations. Maybe all the nations around us have kings. We want a king, too. They come to Samuel and they say, hey, man, we want a king, just like all the other nations. And so Samuel goes and he talks to the God, and God tells him, give them this warning. And Samuel is, is, is doing that. He, so he, say, he says, and he said, Samuel says, this will be the procedure of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and place them for himself in his chariots among his horsemen, and they will run before his chariot. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and of fifties, and some to do his plowing and to reap his harvest and to make his weapons of war and equipment for his chariot. And he will also take your daughters for perfumers and cooks and bakers, and he will take the best of your fields and your vineyards and your olive groves and give them to his servants. And he will take a tenth of your seed and your vineyards, and give them to his officers and to his servants. And he would also take your male servants and your female servants and your best young men and young and your donkeys and use them for his work. And he will take a tenth of your flocks, and, and, and you yourselves will become his servants. Then you will cry out in that day because of your king, when, when you have, which you have chosen for yourselves, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. Verse 19. Nevertheless, the, the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel, and they said, no, but there shall be a king over us. Here we see the house of God. So, so they said, hey, we want a king. We want a king like everybody else got a king. We want a king. Give us a king. You don't like what's going on around here, Sammy? We see what's going on here with you and your sons. We don't like it. We want a king. Samuel goes to tell us God because Samuel was upset. He goes to tell us God. God says, hey, man, don't be upset. They're not rebelling against you. They're rebelling against me. And so he says, tell you what, go back and use this what you tell them. And Samuel says, hey, this is what's going to happen, man. You're going to become his servants. He's going to take the best of the land. He's going to take your sons. He's going to take your daughters. He's going to take the cows. He's going to, whatever it is you got, he's going to take it because he's going to be the king. He's going to use over. It's going to, he's going to use it however he wants to do it. You're going to be upset about it. You're going to get twisted over it. And then you're going to cry out to me. And when you cry out to me, I'm not going to respond. They say, we don't care. They say, there's a warning, 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 Will Robinson, warning. Stop sign, stop sign, stop sign. They say, speed up, man. We're going through this intersection. But see, there's a purpose to the warning. There's a reason God gives us the warning. The warning is the command of God. The warning is the precept of God. The warning is the, the statue of God. The warning is the word of God. God gives us warning. God wants to bless you. Do you understand that? God wants to bless us. Do we, do we get that? Above all things, beloved, I, I wish that you're, 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 you would prosper and be in good health even as your soul prosper. First command is be fruitful and multiply. If we don't get anything else, we got to get that God wants to bless us. The purpose of the command is to bless us in the name of Jesus Christ. And so he gives it as a warning. Warning for, warning for what? The first, first purpose of the warning is for us to stop serving ourselves so we'll serve him. See, the, the, the way this thing works huh, is 
Jesus Christ came and lived a life to prove to us that it could be lived and showed us how to live a perfect life, and he died on the cross for our sins. Or in other words, he first gave himself up for you and I. After he, after he became, took off his glory, put on flesh, got brutalized by the world, he, as he dies this horrible death on the cross, the death that you and I should have died, he dies for us. He gives himself up for us. He turns to us now and says, all I'm asking you to do is to follow the plan that I've written for your life. That's all you have to do. If you surrender to the Holy Spirit, if you will surrender to my will for your life, he said, I will do the rest. Our challenge, House of Worship Church family and friends, is we spend so much time serving ourselves that we don't spend hardly any time serving him. So the purpose of the warning, the purpose of the command, the purpose of the statute, the purpose of, hey, this is God's way, is for us to stop serving ourselves and to start, start serving him. That's a problem that Israel has. See, Israel says they want a king, but they already had a king. See, God was their king. Remember the one that rescued them out of Egypt, the one that was a pillar cloud, by day and a fire cloud by night, the one that did signs and wonders, the one that they didn't even have to eat food uh, from earth. They ate, 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 uh, they ate angel food, if you will. He brought water out of a rock. He did signs and wonders over and over again to prove to them how much he loved them and how much he cared for them. They already had, in the name of Jesus Christ, a king. But they said, I don't want to serve him. I want to serve my Self. And yes, there was a problem with Samuel's sons. He had sons and they were, they were corrupt. Go back and look at verse 3 in chapter 8. His sons were corrupt. But Israel chose not to deal with the corruption, but instead they chose to walk away from God. Stay with me. That's a problem that we got to be on the watch out for, even in the church that we choose not to deal with corruption. We choose not to deal with the ones that are in hierarchy that are going their own way. And when we choose not to deal with the corruption, when we choose not to hold them accountable to the word of God, in essence, we are walking away from God. I don't care how big it is. I don't care how much money it's got in it. I don't care how many programs they have. I don't care how many uh, church uh, campuses they have around the city in the name of Jesus Christ. If there is co corruption at the top of the house and nobody's dealing with it, that, that ministry has walked away from God. So, but it's, easy to, it's easier to walk away from God. It's easier to go my own way than it is to deal with the corruption. They chose not to deal with the corruption. They chose instead to walk away from God. And here it is. Instead of wanting what God had for them, they wanted what the world had for them. They said, we don't want what God has. We, we, we don't want what God has. What we want is what the world. We want to look like everybody else. Huh? Huh? We got too many Christians saying, we want to, I want to look like everybody else. I want to listen to the same music everybody else listens to. I, I want to be the same player. On Sunday morning, instead of being at the house of God, I want to be where the world is going. I want to be in, in the bed. I, I want to go to the same movies that the world goes to. I, I, want to go, I want to listen to the same music. I want to watch the same television show. I want to do the same thing in my relationships as the world does in the name of Jesus Christ. We want what the world has for us instead of what God has for us. And there is a purpose of the warning. There's a purpose to the warning. The first one is, so I'll stop serving, uh, uh, I'll stop serving myself and I'll begin to serve him because when I serve him, there is a reward that comes from serving him. Number two, the purpose of the warning is to stop striving and wait upon the Lord. Oh, Lord God. Yeah, I could sit down here for a while. I want to say today, we talked about last week about the ministry of suffering, that God has a ministry of suffering and a big part of the suffering is waiting on God. I don't know today, but one of the hardest things I find to do is wait on God. When God has spoken, Brother Wayne, a promise in my life, when I can read through the word of God and I can see the promises of God that are directly correlated to my life, but when I look at my life, I don't see the re result or the manifestation of that promise yet. Do I have any, any help in the house today? That, that, that waiting on God, waiting on God, when, when I, God's already told me that, that if you love your wife the way that, that Christ loved the church, your, your marriage is going to get right, and I've been loving her the way Christ loved the church, but things aren't where, where, where they ought to be yet. He told me that if I submit to my husband the way that, that the church is supposed 
supposed to submit to Christ, that, that things are going to get right. But I, I don't see that right yet. Yeah. To raise up a child in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and when they get old, they won't depart from it. I've been doing that, but my child is going crazy. I, I haven't, I'm not seeing the promises of God, and I'm waiting. I'm waiting with expectation. I'm waiting from this place of understanding that, that I got a better day coming than today. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to tell you today that waiting on God is a difficult thing. Huh? Even the great father of faith, Abraham, found it difficult to wait on the Lord. Huh? I don't care who you are. I don't care how, how strong you are. I don't care how much you fast. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how much Holy Ghost you got. How many tongues you talk in that you can find yourself in a position in the place of being in between from the place of the, the promise has been given and the manifestation of the same. That place of the in between is a difficult place. And oftentimes we find ourselves, I know I have in, in, in the past, I found myself trying to make it happen. Huh? Come here, Abraham. I'm going to make it happen. Huh? And they, tried, they tried to get David in the, in the cave to make it happen. But David said, I'm not going to make it happen. I won't touch God's anointing. Have you ever found yourself in a place where you're in the in-between and you have been tempted to make it happen? If all I have to do is, if I do this, then they'll do that, and then I'll take this, and I'll turn that way, and then I'll, I'll, I'll call them, and that'll make it happen. Because I'm used to making it happen, at least I think I've been making it happen. I go into the work, workplace environment, and if I, I follow the rules, and I, I say that, and when I do that, things happen the way that they trained me to make things happen. But you got to know, and I need to know, because the Holy Ghost told me, Sister Woodard, that it, even in that, it wasn't me making anything happen. It's still God doing the work in the name of Jesus Christ. But I want to, I'm tempted to make it happen. But when I heed the warning, I'll stop striving and I'll wait upon the Lord. Huh? When you and I wait upon the Lord patiently, we show that we are surrendered to the King of Kings. What we're saying, God, is that it's all you. It's all about you. I don't really know what's going on. I, I'll do what you tell me to do, Father, the way you want me to do it, Lord God. But if it's going to happen, Master, you're going to do it. Doesn't mean I don't get. I don't have to do anything. I can still pray. I can still praise. I can still worship. I can still study. I can still fast. I can still shout. I can still give you glory, Lord God. But in regards to this situation, I'm going to take my hands off of it, Lord, and allow you to do what it is that you want to do. Just because I can't see it don't mean you're not doing it. Just because I can't feel it don't mean you're not doing it because you never stop working. Israel is, Israel is striving in this moment. Things are wrong and they're trying to make them right. Huh? But in their own power, not by the power of God, in their own power. They, they refuse to deal with the corruption that's there, that's dishonoring God, and they have gone their own way, and that what they are saying is the remedy for my problem is in the world. Oh, help me, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, I feel that now in the name of Jesus Christ. I feel that now in the spirit. There are too many of us in Christian, and there are too many folk in the church house, there are too many folk that when they die, they are going to go to heaven, but they still believe that the solution to their problem is not in the church, but it's in the world. There are too many people that now are saying that the church is irrelevant, that the church is, is old school, and it, it don't matter anymore what the word of God say. It don't matter anymore what the authentic man of God say, because there's so many people are prostituting the church and prostituting the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so now the problem that I have that only God can solve because he's the answer to every problem. He's the solution to every question in the name of Jesus Christ. I think I can find it in the world but I can't find it in the presence of God. Huh? Yes, yes. We're striving. We're striving. We're trying to make it happen and we have forgotten how to appropriately see the sign and wait on the Lord. Huh? See, here's the reality for the children of Israel was that David was already ordained by God in his time to be Israel's first king. That was God's design. He had already designed it to be Jesus Christ of Nazareth, son of David. Yeah? From the foundation of the world, before he 
before he spoke it into existence, he had already designed it. He had already seen it happen in the name of Jesus Christ. But they're not willing to wait on the Lord. Don't you understand today, House of Worship Church family and friends, that if you won't wait, if you won't go through, if you're not willing to deal with the situation the way that God wants you to deal with it, the only outcome has got to be disaster. It's got to be trouble. It might look good for a while. Saul looked good for about two years. And then after two years, it went into the spiritual garbage can. Uh, there is a purpose to the warning. First is that I'll stop serving, I'll stop serving myself, and I'll stop, start serving him. Secondarily, I'll stop striving, and I'll wait upon the Lord. And thirdly and finally today, I'll stop being out of position to receive from the Lord. Have you ever been there? You wonder why? Why is it taking me so long? Why, why, why the breakthrough taking me so long? Why, I, I've, been, I've, been, I've been trying to do the right thing. I, I think I'm trying to go in the right direction. Why, 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 why she get blessed? Why he get blessed? Why they get blessed? Why the, the thing I've been praying for, I'm watching you. Uh, operating and I'm watching it manifest in your life and, and I look at your life and I'm saying I don't really see a whole whole, whole lot of difference with what's, what's going on. Why? Why? Because I'm out of position. I, I don't mean I don't love God. Don't, don't, don't mean that I don't, I don't care about God. It doesn't mean that God has forgotten about me. I'm just out of position. It, 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 it's, it, it, it fell here and, and I'm here. Uh, and God, God, God's been trying to he, 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 He's been trying to push me. He's been trying to push me over, over to the right, but I'm resistant to the warning. Yeah. Jesus, I'm resistant to the warning. I, I got it for you. I, I, I want to bless you. I want to give you what you're asking for because what you're asking for brings me honor and it brings me glory. It's really going to it's really going to make shine a light into the life of those you come in contact with when you start telling them about what I've done in your life. But I got you, I got to get you to where you're going to do it my way. I got to get you over here. Hmm? So here it is. God will permit self-will to have its own way. Yeah. Yeah. God's not going to do for me what I can do for myself. See, God's not going to going to make me read my Bible. God's not going to make me come to church. God's going to make me praise. I got to lift my hands and praise. I ain't having the praise of my people. Huh? Folk, folk that won't praise are saying, I don't, I don't, I don't really care about the presence of God. I, I, at, least, at least I got it how I want it. I, don't, I can't do that. That's not, really, that's not really who I am. That's not really who I am. I I'm not really somebody that, that, that's, that's a praiser. I'm sorry. He said, let everything that's breathing praise the Lord. See, the reason, I, the reason I'm out of position is because I won't praise. I'm trying to find a worshiper. I'm looking for a worshiper, one that will worship me in spirit and truth. Well, I don't know. I haven't really been taught how, how to worship. I understand that, man, because that's okay. You're still going to go to heaven when you die. But you're out of position because you're not worshiping. Help me, Jesus. Uh, he says, will a man rob God? Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Huh? I'm out of position because I'm not giving to God the way I ought to give to God. Serve the Lord with gladness. I'm not serving the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm out of position. I'm out of position. And I'm out of position probably, most likely, because of unbelief. The warning is there to make sure that you are in position that you and I may receive from the Lord. We don't have to go our own way. He'll let us go our own way. If we choose to go our own way, they say here, Israel says, oh yes, we're going to have a king. He says, okay. Go ahead, take, take a king. They got what they wanted, but they didn't want what they got. You ever been there? Huh? The good news is that there's recovery from that spot. That spot huh? I have certainly gotten what I wanted, but I didn't want what I got. But the good news is I can still recover as long as I have Jesus, yeah? Saul reigned for 40 years, and only two of them was he in fellowship with God. The first two. How much happier, if you look at Israel and look at the, the reign of Saul, the transition from Saul to David, all of the turmoil that went on, the breakup of Israel. Uh, David was king over Judah for 15 years before he was king over, uh, before he was king over uh, uh, all of Israel. All of the, the turmoil and the angst. Think how much happier 
Israel would have been if they would just heed the warning. You, we looked at verses 10 through uh, 18. If they would have said, oh, 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 no, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. I changed my mind. I recant. I repent. Not that. Don't want to have that in, in my house. I don't want to go that way. How much happier they would have been if they had only listened to the signs, the warnings of God. Israel wanted to be like everybody else, but God wanted them to be different. God wants us to be different. God wants us to stand out. Huh? Wait a minute, Israel's, all, Israel's the only country that doesn't have a king. And then they could have said, yeah, we do. We do have a king. King Jesus. That's our king. That's who we listen to. Let me tell you about all the things he's done for me. Let me tell you about all the things that he's done for us. God has said the same thing for you and I. He wants you and I to be different. People are going to say, hey, you're the only one that doesn't do that. What's going on with that? I got a key. Let me tell you all about what he's done for me. Do you want to be different? Psalm 24, 4 through 5 says it this way. He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul under vanity, or sworn deceitfully, he shall receive, she shall receive, they shall receive the blessing from the Lord. The key word for me in that scripture is one who has not lifted up their soul to vanity. That's what Israel did. Israel, they became vain. They said, I want what I want. I want what pleases me. I want, as I survey my life, as I look at my situation, I am the best person to determine what's best for me, and I want what I want. Give it to me now, and if you don't give it to me now, there's going to be a problem. I completely and totally reject that idea right now in the presence of you and in the presence of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't want what I want. I want what he wants because I don't know what I want. And the stuff I think I want, I've found too many times in the years I've been alive that I don't even want the things that I think that I want. I don't want what I want. I want what he wants. And when I want what he wants, I get more than I could have ever wanted. Because there's a reason for the warning. He wants to bless me. He wants to elevate me. He wants me to be successful. He wants me to have joy. He wants me to have peace. All the things he said, exceedingly abundantly above all that you might ask or think. That's what he has planned for you and I. But I've got to hit the brakes when we see the stop sign, y'all. Uh-huh.